Hi everybody, this is Shannon from No Shelf Control. I'm so glad you were able to join me on the channel tonight. Um, I have some exciting news. There is a new book service that you may not know about. It's a little bit like Book of the Month Club, um, but it's actually kind of different. Um, and I subscribe to both, love both of them, and wanted you to know about this new one. So the new one is called Aardvark Book Club, um, and they offer four to five new books a month, much like Book of the Month Club, but they have lots of books from previous months that are also available to be chosen as your book um, for the given month. So the April books, the March books, some of the February books are still there, and you can choose those as your May book as well. So it's a little bit different from Book of the Month Club that way. They do separate their books into different categories. So there are mystery books, historical fiction, contemporary fiction, sci-fi, horror, all the different kinds of books, and they're all split out that way. You download the app, um, you pay $16.99 a month, I believe, um, and you get one book that you can choose. It's a hardback. Um, it comes in this gorgeous box, I'll show you. So this is the beautiful purple, pink, and black box um, that arrived with my books today. And for $9.99, you can add, $9.99 each, you can add two more books to your order, just like with Book of the Month Club. Um, so the exciting part is they gave me a code to offer you, my viewers, so that for your first Aardvark box month, you can get one hardback book for $4.00. That's a deal. You can't get a hardback book anywhere um, brand new for $4. So my um, code is no shelf control, all capital letters. I don't know if the caps matter, but it's no shelf control, one word. You just put that in the box uh, when you check out for a coupon code, or you can access it directly through the link in my description. Um, so that's a $4 hardback book. Um, you can cancel or skip a month at any time if you're not happy with the books um, that are available. But I wanted to show you what I chose for the month of April. My April books just showed up. And then tomorrow or the next day, I'll show you um, what's available to be chosen for May. So let's see what's in my box. First of all, I got these three really cute little aardvark shaped bookmarks which I thought were adorable, um, really cute. And they're high quality. They're like, they're not laminated, but they're heavier paper. Um, and I really liked that. And then this came with it. So these were all the new books that were available in April. And it says, this month we challenge you to take a picture of an aardvark title, a food that is mentioned in the book with an explanation of its relevance in the caption. Once again, three lucky winners will be chosen from a draw to win a free book. Note, food can be anything from an apple to a store-bought cupcake to a home-cooked meal. Post your picture and tag us at at Aardvark Book Club so our team can record your entry. Winners will be announced by the end of the month. So that is the April challenge. I may have missed it because I got my books um, just today um, for April, but I'm sure that when I order my May books, there'll be a challenge in there too that you can take advantage of and potentially get chosen to win a free book. So then the more important thing, the books that I ordered. So the first one is A Likely Story by Lee McMullen Abramson. Um, and the blurb on this book says a standout debut about family secrets and the costs of protecting a precious legacy. And that blurb is from Fiona Davis, whom I love, New York Times bestselling author of The Magnolia Palace. I saw her in person um, recently here in Columbus, Ohio, and she did a really nice job um, speaking and reading from her book. But this is A Likely Story by Lee McMullen Abramson. So let me give you the skinny on that one. A Likely Story was uh, published March 14th, 2023 by Atria Books, and it's 352 pages. And I will read you the synopsis that Aardvark Book Club actually provides um, as part of the app when you choose your book. So it says, the only child of an iconic American novelist discovers a shocking tangle of family secrets that upends everything she thought she knew about her parents, 
her gilded childhood, and her own stalled writing career in this brilliantly observed standout debut. Growing up in the 90s in New York City as the only child of famous parents was both a blessing and a curse for Isabel Manning. Her beautiful society hostess mother Claire and New York Times bestselling author Father Ward were the city's intellectual it couple. Ward's glamorous obligations often took him away from Isabel, but Claire made sure her childhood was always filled with magic and love. Now an adult, all Isabel wants is to be a successful writer like her father, but after many false starts and the unexpected death of her mother, she faces her upcoming 35th birthday alone and on the edge of a breakdown. Her anxiety only skyrockets when she uncovers some shocking truths about her parents and begins wondering if everything she knew about her family was all based on an elaborate lie. Wry, wise, and propulsive, a likely story is punctuated with fragments of a compulsively readable book within a book about a woman determined to steal back the spotlight from a man who has cheated his way to the top. The characters seem eerily familiar, but is the plot based on fact? And more importantly, who is the author? So a book within a book, very exciting to me. Also, this idea that um, Isabel has grown up charmed, um, but has lost her mother and is now finding out secrets about her parents um, and wondering what her life, you know, what's really true about the life that she grew up in. So I'm very excited about that. This book is actually in their contemporary fiction section, and I believe it was one of the March choices. But as I said, when I came in in April, I was able to pick any book that was still available, um, as well as two add-ons. So of course, I picked three. Um, so that is A Likely Story by Lee McMullen Abramson. The next one I have, you have heard me talk about before, and I was very excited that it was a choice for Aardvark. This is called The Sweet Spot by Amy Popel. Um, and it says she is the author of Small Admissions. Uh, some of the blurbs on this book say, with shy humor, sorry, let's try that again. With sly humor and sharp understanding, Amy Popel hits the sweet spot in this funny, twisty, good-hearted novel about families lost, found, and made. And that's from Virginia Cantra, New York Times bestselling author of Meg and Joe and Beth and Amy. It also says, unabashedly warm-hearted and fun, the sweet spot serves up a fresh story about the chaos of family flavored with classic components of the most entertaining dramedies a charming New York setting, endearing core characters, and a hilarious supporting cast that often steals the show. Irresistible. And that is from Mary Laura Philpot, author of Bomb Shelter, Love, Time, and Other Explosives. So let's look at the synopsis of this one and see when it was published. This one is actually published January 31st, 2023. And it is an Atria Emily Bestler book um, published by Atria Emily Bestler, and it is 400 pages. And the Aardvark synopsis for this one says, in the heart of Greenwich Village, three women form an accidental sorority when a baby belonging to exactly none of them lands on their collective doorstep. Lauren and her family, lucky bastards, have been granted the use of a spectacular brownstone teeming with history and dizzyingly unattractive 70s wallpaper. Adding to the home's bohemian grungy splendor is the bar occupying the basement, a mostly beloved dive called the Sweet Spot. Within days of moving in, Lauren discovers that she has already made an enemy in the neighborhood by inadvertently sparking the divorce of a couple she has never actually met. Melinda's husband of 30 years has dumped her for a young celebrity entrepreneur named Felicity, and to Melinda's horror, the lovebirds are soon to become parents. In her incandescent rage, Melinda wreaks havoc wherever she can, including in Felicity's Soho boutique, where she has a fit of epic proportions, which happens to be caught on film. Olivia, the industrious 20-something behind the counter, who has big dreams and bigger debt, gets caught in the crossfire. In an effort to defuse Melinda's temper, Olivia has a tantrum of her own and gets unceremoniously canned, thanks to TikTok. When Melinda's ex follows his lover across the country, leaving their squalling baby behind, the three women rise to the occasion in order to forgive, to forget, 
to ferberize and to track down the wayward parents. But can their little village find a way toward the happily ever afters they all desire? Welcome to the sweet spot. So I thought this one sounded great. I thought it sounded great the first time we talked about it on the channel. And when I found it in the Aardvark box, I was just thrilled. Um, so these are three different women, three totally different New York stories, but brought together by a baby um, that doesn't belong to any of them and for whom they're trying to find the parents. So it's a bit of a road trip story. Um, it's also set in New York, which I love. Um, and all of the characters seem both interesting and witty. I have started this one, so I have a little bit of a advantage in that I know that it's a funny book as well as being well-written um, with, you know, well-drawn characters. So I am excited about that one. That is the second book that I got in my box. So if you consider that I got the first one, A Likely Story, for $4, um, I got the second one for $9.99. And my third one, because each month you can pick up to two additional books for $9.99 each. The third one I picked is called Factory Girls by Michelle Gallen. So Factory Girls says, the blurb on the back says, this novel is a wonder. The heroine is cheeky, the humor dark, the dialect thick, the sorrow palpable. Fans of Kenneth Branagh's Belfast and television's Dairy Girls will find much to love. And that is a Library Journal starred review. Also, there's a quote from Mary Beth Keene here, um, who I've been talking about a lot on the channel lately. It says, Factory Girls pulses with dark, irreverent humor. Set in a place where dreams are laughable at best, dangerous at worst. It's a big F you to the only world these characters know. And yet there's a vulnerability here. Hope, too. I loved it. Mary Beth Keen, New York Times bestselling author of Ask Again, Yes. So this is called Factory Girls. I love this cover. Um, it's, you know, great colors. There's a bra down here and an iron. Um, it's got the aardvark symbol, but it's on a CD case. And then there's a jar spilling some stuff and a lipstick up here and something is broken in the background. So I loved this really graphic cover. Let's see what we know about Factory Girls. So Factory Girls was published November 29th, 2022. So as you can see for the April box, I didn't actually pick any April books. Um, I just put, picked books that looked really good to me. Um, and then coming back in May, I can pick other books that are available or I can pick one of the five May books that I'll tell you about in a couple of days. So Factory Girls, November 29th, 2022, Algonquin Books and 304 pages. Here is the synopsis of Factory Girls. A funny, fierce, and unforgettable read about a young woman working a summer job in a shirt factory in Northern Ireland, while tensions rise both inside and outside the factory walls. It's the summer of 1994, and all Maeve Murray wants are good final exam results so she can earn her ticket out of the wee North Northern Irish town she has grown up in during the Troubles. Away from her crowded home, the silence and sadness surrounding her sister's death, and most of all, away from the simmering violence of her divided community. And as a first step, Maeve's taken a summer job in a local shirt factory, working alongside Protestants with her best friends, kind, innocent Carolyn Jackson, and privileged and clever Aoife O'Neill. But getting the right exam results is only part of Maeve's problem. She's got to survive a tit-for-tat paramilitary campaign, iron 100 shirts an hour all day, every day, and deal with the attentions of Andy Strawbridge, her slick and untrustworthy English boss. What seems to be a great opportunity to earn money before starting university turns out to be a crucible in which Maeve is tested in ways she may not be equipped to handle. Seeking justice for herself and her fellow workers may just be Maeve's one-way ticket out of town. Bitingly hilarious, perceptive, and steeped in the vernacular of its time and place, Factory Girls is perfect for fans of voice-driven stories with bite, humor and realism such as the Netflix series Dairy Girls, and novels by Douglas Stewart, Roddy Doyle, and Anna Burns. So I think this sounds really good. Um, set in Ireland, which I'm, you know, very fond of. 
I, I only know how to pronounce the name Aoife because I graduated uh, college with a young woman who named her daughter Aoife. Um, having gone to Notre Dame, I know a lot of folks who gave their children Gaelic names. Um, so, and I love the name Maeve. That jumped out to me right away. If my last name would have gone with Maeve and Spencer would have been a girl, um, I definitely would have named him Maeve, but it doesn't match well with our last name. So this is set in Ireland. It's the summer of 1994, so those 1990s when I graduated from college. Um, so I have a soft spot for that kind of setting um, and that time period. And I'm really interested. Also, the Dairy Girls. Who doesn't love the Dairy Girls? If this is similar to that, I'm sure it's going to be funny. Um, and, you know, the characters are going to be lovable. So I'm definitely into that. So that is my third Aardvark Book Club book box choice for April. Um, I will be back in a couple of days to show you what you could possibly pick for May. Let me mention uh, the promo code that I have again. So it is called No Shelf Control. It's one word, No Shelf Control. Just put it in the promo code box or use the link that I have in the description and get your own hardback book for $4. You can add on two others for $9.99 each. So... Give it a shot. I think uh, they have really great choices and you just can't get a hardback book for $4 anywhere. So I hope you enjoyed learning about the Aardvark Book Club. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and three more books that I thought you should know about that came in my Aardvark book box. Um, I hope you'll come back and continue to join me in talking about all things bookish. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps me to know what you're enjoying so that I can do more of those things. I hope you have a great week. I have some more video surprises up my sleeve, as well as some single book reviews, some new books coming out that I think you should know about, um, and some bookstore tours. So hang around, uh, keep watching my videos, and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.